Lift up. Move on. Say move on. You are important. That your gift is important. Profit with it. Obedience to God will give you testimony. Are you ready for God? I tell you, God is ready for you. God is ready to bless you. When you are not inspiring, you are inspiring people. When you stop growing, you start down. God is ready for you to be happy. The earlier you know whom you are in God, the better you will be today.
have there's a day for it to stop how many can say amen to that if God tells you to do the impossible don't look for who have not done it somebody say I hear you I don't care how many years you carry reproach there's a day God takes the reproach away somebody say amen for Elizabeth if you want to be inspired don't look for who has expired many of us have friends that are tear bearers leave them alone go and look for Elizabeth you don't need who will weigh you down you need who will lift you up somebody say hallelujah you don't need someone that is annoyed of what God is doing with you you need someone who will rejoice in your miracle hallelujah I say hallelujah hallelujah glory be to God thank you Dr. Sweda for your kindness to bring me here this morning I bring you all greetings from Africa I thank God for what he's doing over there yes, the gospel of Luke chapter 1 is where my text is coming from Luke chapter 1 about 18 years ago I came across this scripture not because it had not been in the Bible but because I didn't see it as something that was different from Christmas message but I saw it in a way that God made it known to me that for every trial we have there's a day for it to stop how many can say amen to that I read this scripture and it touched my life and I'm grateful to God that I have preached it to countless millions in all over the world but look at this verse here verse 24 of Luke chapter 1 the Bible says and after those days his wife Elizabeth conceived and he hid herself five months saying thus had the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men oh say to your neighbor your reproach is gone Please, help me say it loud. Your reproach is gone. So many times when we face tribulations and trials and life of torture, especially when we are serving God. You know, you wouldn't believe this, sir. Uh, for 38 years and 3 months, I've been preaching now. But I never knew a Christian as a young man can face trial. I never knew you can be in the house of God and face tribulation. I never knew that Christians can fight one another or betray one another or even try to kill one another. Before I began to read the Bible that Lucifer was not from Tampa. <laughs> Lucifer was in heaven. And the second in, com uh, in command after Father, Son and Holy Ghost Lucifer was second in command because he was the archangel of worship. But the Bible says, and that this is what helped me most, and there was war in heaven. I said, oh my God, there, if there's war in my church, no problem. If there's war in heaven, there's war in my city, there was war in heaven. But coming back to the story I have just read, it took several years for this woman of God and her husband to get their need met and she uttered the words of prophecy which I want you to retain in your mind God has dealt 
kindly with me. Say that to everybody. Please talk to me. I'm not a visitor here. I'm just preaching for the first time. Say, God has dealt with me kindly. Now, now add the second word. He's taking away my reproach. Now say the two words together. God has dealt with me kindly. He's taking away my reproach. How many of you want any kind of reproach in your life to go away? Say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Now, for Elizabeth to say that, that today, March the 2nd, you can time the day your change takes place. You can time the day the difference came to your life. You can carry a load for a long time in your life, but a day can come when you can say like today, Elizabeth is saying, this day, say that with me, the Lord has taken away my reproach among men. That's good for you, brother. It doesn't matter how many laugh at you before. It doesn't matter how many say, who are you before? God says from today, your reproach is gone. Somebody say amen. amen. I thank God for that. Now, you know, to have a reproach may not be by your own approach. It could be what the enemy imposed upon you. Sometimes, people ask me, Idahosa, why do good things, bad things happen to good people? I say because when bad happens to bad, nobody sees it. May I repeat? Why does bad things happen to good people? Because when bad, ask me why. Point to your hand and say why. I didn't hear you. Be bold, don't be afraid. Why what? Why do bad things happen to good people? So ask me a question loud. Because when bad happens to bad, nobody sees it. <laughs> Understand that? When something bad happens to a bad man, there's no difference. But when something bad happens to a good person, everybody knows. Did you hear what I'm saying? Oh yes. If you build this church, the world may not know too much. But you, if, you, if the pastor who built this church is not known all over America, but if this pastor were to steal a bicycle, everybody will know. You understand what I'm saying? Satan doesn't advertise good things because that's not his job. Oh God, I, am I offending you? The devil does not advertise good things. That's not his job. His job is to kill, to destroy. But the good thing is, weak saints should help to advertise what is good. You didn't hear that. The devil doesn't talk good of good people. But good people should talk good of what is good. Somebody say amen. All right, let me go straight to the Bible so that you don't miss, make mistake. Look at verse 26. And in this, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin exposed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. Uh, now, listen to this. God sent angel to Mary. How many of you are tired of seeing devil? Aren't you tired of seeing visitor call Satan, Satan, Satan? I think once a while we all need to see Angel Gabriel. I'd like to hear you say amen. amen. Listen to what this angel said to Mary. Verse 28 says, And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail! 
Aha. Hey! Say that everybody. Thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Somebody say amen. amen. Uh, I, I look forward to the day I will hear the church being told. Hey! Instead of, ooh. Hell is better than shame. Mary, hey, you are highly favored. You are blessed among women. Somebody say amen. amen. Now listen to the scripture carefully. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salvation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Say, that's good for me. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. I'm not going to say too many things this morning, but I love the visitation of angel. I love the word, the word, you are highly favored. I love the word, God is with you. Oh, tap your chest, say, God is with me. If God was not in this place, this man would have been dead by now. <laughs> For a long time. So it doesn't matter how many years you struggled to come out, you are going to come out. Sometimes it takes longer than expected. But delay is no denier. Sometimes the load you carry is heavier than you expected. But Jesus is still our burden bearer. Sometimes your fear is not out of fear. But out of what is this? But if it's from God, that's a good one. Mary said, what is this? What are you saying? Going to conceive, have a baby. I'm not married. I know no man. Angel said, it's favor. Thank God, that's favor. To have what you don't have and become your own is favor. Especially if your reproach is removed. Somebody say amen. amen. Oh God. Let me look at the scripture again. And he said, Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And the, his kingdom shall be no end. Of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto, in, unto the angel, How shall this be? Sin I know not a man. That is one of the biggest problems today. God is telling me do the impossible. God is showing me big revelation. God is telling me my reproach is gone. God is telling Mary now said, God says I'm going to conceive. God says I'm going to give birth to a son. He shall be great. He shall be called the son of the highest. But I'm not married. How shall this thing be? Maybe you are there this morning. Maybe you are hearing me on the radio. Or you are going to watch this program by television in Africa anywhere. All that God sent to you that are bigger than you is small for God. Anything too high for you is below God. But Mary asked a good question. How can God ask me to build a big facility like this? When I have no money. And the angel answered. The Holy Ghost. Oh somebody jump up and say the Holy Ghost. I said jump up and say the Holy Ghost. <laughs> All the 
40 years I've heard of the Carpenter's Home Church. I wonder whether the pastor was a human being. <laughs> then two years ago, he was one of our key speakers at ICBM. He opened his mouth and shook the thousands of people that stood there. And I said, well, if this man thinks he has trouble and he's shaking those with trouble, then his trouble is not too big. You will never, you never, never, I'm not sure you remember the message you preached to those 7,000 people that night. He gave them confidence. He gave us hope. He told us it doesn't matter how much we are bruised and shaking. God can steal your tempest. And I'm here this morning just in case you are passing through fire. Don't stop. Pass through. For David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, me, it didn't say you, but it said I shall fear no evil. Somebody say amen. amen. How can I fulfill a dream bigger than what I am? Ghost. How can I have a car when my salary cannot feed me? Holy Ghost. How can I build a house when I lost my job? Holy Ghost. How can I live in peace when everything around me is peacing? Holy Ghost. How do I know I will be well when I'm very sick? Holy Ghost. Who will lift me up when I'm down and everybody around me is down? Holy Ghost. Somebody say Holy Ghost. Let me hear you again. Say it again. When you are weak, who do you need? When you are down, who do you need? When you are poor, who do you need? When you don't know what to do, what do you need? When everything around you is falling down, what do you need? Everybody say, Holy Ghost! Let me hear you say, Holy Ghost! Who you need when there's no food on your table holy ghost when your body is not agreeing to your life holy ghost when you are down holy ghost when you are poor holy ghost the holy ghost the holy ghost the holy ghost somebody said big hallelujah Listen to this. Sit down for a few minutes. Listen to this. Verse 35. The angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. I quoted from your book, to one of my books, Faith for All Life's Tom. You will see a chapter that concerns you there. I quoted you verbatim. That the devil doesn't touch his own like he touched what is not his own. But hear what the word of God is saying here. When anything in your life is too big for you to handle. Hide under the shadow of the most high. He said the power of the highest shall overshadow you. That's why you are alive today. 
If it wasn't the power of the highest, they would have shown me your tomb. But the power of the highest is higher than anything else. Somebody say hallelujah. Well, let's set that one aside. What God sent me here for, I'm getting close to it. To this church this morning. This ministry, this ministry, I prophesy, cannot be destroyed by man. It's under the power of the Most High. I said that by the authority God put in my mouth. Carpenter's church was not built by man's ego. It was built by God's revelation. And I want to say this. If you allow the vision of this home church to die, God will not blame that man. He will blame you. Ask me why. Put your hand and say why. Everybody I do this in my home church and I'm not afraid to do it here. Point your hand to me and say why. Now do this. Say why will God blame me? Because God told him to do it that you may continue to keep it. Did you hear me? I said, did you hear me? God told him to build this that you may keep it. He's done his part. If you don't play your part, God will blame you. You will not blame him. Did you hear me? God said, Carl, build me a testimony house in Lakeland. Build it by my provision. Build it in the face of all odds. He obeyed God. Now the challenge is your own to fill this house with souls. The challenge is your own to bring men and women to worship God in this church. Somebody say big hallelujah. You say that, also, how do I do that? The Holy Ghost. Lift your hand and say Holy Ghost. Wave your hand and say Holy Ghost. Sit down. Now listen to how to carry out the vision that is bigger than you. That's my message. How to carry out, say that everybody. The vision, I didn't hear you. That is bigger than me. Say it again. Don't be up. Tell your neighbor, I want you to learn how to carry out the vision that is bigger than you listen to this and be listen to this behold verse 26 let's read it together once you go and behold thy cousin elizabeth she also had also conceived a son in her old age and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren it doesn't matter whatever name they call you in the past let it be was you didn't hear me mary what god is telling me to tell you is that your cousin elizabeth at her old age who was called barren has conceived and the baby in her womb is now six months old who was called i don't care what you called me before give me a new name your old name is not important your new name is very very important she was called barren but now she's pregnant and the baby is six months old somebody shout hallelujah oh look at verse 27 for with god verse 37 
for with God. Oh, I didn't hear you. That's not in your Bible. For with God, what? For with God, what? For with God, what? Many times with you and I, there are many things we cannot do. Not with God. Many times, there are many things that God gives us grace to do that flesh cannot do. But thank God that with God, say I'm with God. I didn't hear you. Because I'm with God, all things are possible. I'm with God. Because I'm with God, all things are possible. Shout hallelujah. For with God, nothing is impossible. Mary had that. Look at what Mary did. And Mary, Mary said, Behold the hand of the Lord, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city called Judah and entered into the house of Zechariah and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, sir, may I borrow you for one minute? Come, bring your Bible. Yes, come. Yes, sir. Listen to this. And Gabriel said to Mary, I've given you all the message God gave me for you. I'm going. But look at these words and hear it in your ears. God says you, Mary, will give back to his son. And the seed from you shall be called the son of the highest. But for you to know that what I'm saying is true. For you to know. Come on, woman leader, come here. You black dressed woman, yes. Yes, okay. Thank you, ma'am. This is Elizabeth. You lady, come. Yes. Please come. Don't be ashamed. This is your father's son. I met you here. This is, for example, Mary. This is Elizabeth. I am Zachariah. You are in Jacobra. In Jacobra, sir. Mary. Your cousin, Elizabeth, who was called barren, now has six baby in her womb. She was called barren. She was called barren. Was, not now. God has taken her reproach away. Somebody say hallelujah. I don't care how many years you carry reproach. There's a day God takes the reproach away. Somebody say amen. amen. But the Bible says this, Pastor. Mary arose. Mary had the sense to go to look for Elizabeth. If God tells you to do the impossible, don't look for who have not done it. Somebody say, I hear you. That is why. This is a secret today. Come on, son, Steve. No, come, sir, come. Please don't blame me. I'm at home. <laughs> if you are looking for a visitor, send for another pastor. <laughs> Every time I see your father in ORU, and I look at what Ora Robert have done, and I look at what your father have. I've been to this place three times without letting your father know. I've looked around this whole property. But any man that wants to defeat setback 
must constantly look at his success. This is a success story. This place is a success story. This is not a defeated place. This is, tap your feet, say this is a success story. This is a success story. Where you are now is a success story. But every time I see your dad in Tulsa, and I look around the entire properties in ORU, and look at the property here, I look at similar story. I look at the similarity of is possible. When your dad did this, he didn't know how to do it. Open your ears. But God told him how to do it. Yes. Now that it has been done, no fear. God is not only author, he's author and finisher. Yes. Somebody say amen. Yes. That's one story. You keep that within yourself. God who provided this place will sustain this place. Yes. That's my prophecy number one. Number two. Mary went to look for Elizabeth. If you want to be inspired, don't look for who has expired. Elizabeth is a proof that what God is telling you is true. She was called barren, but she's now pregnant with six-month baby in her. When you want your vision to be fulfilled, Go and look for Elizabeth, who was called barren, who is no more barren. If you want your vision to rise, go look for Elizabeth. Because the Bible said, when Mary arrived in Elizabeth's house, the baby in her womb leaped up. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look for someone to lift up your vision. Look for someone who will make your baby lift. Not somebody who will cause you abortion. Not somebody who will cause you miscarriage. Look for whose vision can challenge your vision. Look for whose story is a true story. Everybody say yes! Elizabeth is a proof. That what God is telling you is true. Elizabeth is a consolation to barrenness. Elizabeth is the answer to your question. How can this thing be? Go and see Elizabeth. Elizabeth has a baby in his womb. Who stands up to say, is right if you don't want your vision to die visit elizabeth if you want god to confirm what he's telling you visit elizabeth many of you have friends that are still barren leave them alone go and look for elizabeth many of us have friends that are tell bearers Leave them alone. Go and look for Elizabeth. You don't need who will weigh you down. You need who will lift you up. Somebody say hallelujah. You don't need someone that is annoyed of what God is doing with you. You need someone who will rejoice in your miracle. Somebody say hallelujah. All of you follow me. Just a minute sir. Before you leave. Come back. Come back. Come back. Four of you come around me. I will soon let you go. Come and look at this. <sighs> she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And when and whence is this to me? That the mother of my Lord should come to me. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Yeah. Yeah. 
from now, the only visitor you must entertain is who will bring you joy. Did anybody hear what I'm saying? Don't go to where your vision will be blown. Don't visit who will tell you that's not God, that's the devil. Look for who will tell you though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I shall fear no evil. Look for who will tell you though he slay me yet shall I follow him. Can I hear you everybody say hallelujah. Mary thank God you went to Elizabeth. Elizabeth is a reminder that whom God say he is is whom he is. Yeah. Yeah. Elizabeth is a reminder that old age does not stop miracle. Yeah. Elizabeth is a reminder that if God says something to you, no matter how long it takes, he shall bring it to pass. Yeah. Lastly, Elizabeth is a fulfillment. That God can visit man mm -hmm. with joy yeah. in the midst of sorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Stand up. Yeah. Yeah. God bless you. How many of you want to ask God to give you friendly Elizabeth today? Come forward right now. How many of you want your vision to become new? How many of you want God to give you new direction? How many of you want to say, God, you put me here and Satan will not take me away? How many of you want to say, God, here am I, use me? How many of you want to say, God, make me an instrument? Come forward right now. This is not just altar call for salvation. This is altar call for rededication. How many of you know that God is the one that put you in this ministry? How many of you know that God is the one that sent you to Cabinet Home Church? Get up and come and meet me here right now. Quickly, 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 quickly. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Get up, come closer, come closer, come closer. I want everybody, as many as can get up and say, I'm going to rededicate myself. I'm going to recommit myself to the vision of this place. I spent four hours last night praying on what to say to you. You know why? To whom much is given, much is expected. This is a vision we must not allow to die. God bet this place. We must be alive to keep it alive. How many of you can say amen to that? We build both city and village churches. If they had left me and said, God bless you, the devil would have killed me. But they joined with me to say, Lord, what would thou have me do? Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm going to believe God. No sickness in your body will follow you home. No pain in your body will follow you home. And everything that God asks you to do in this ministry, you will not be discouraged to go back. I want you to get up and say, God, you sent me to Carpenter's Home Church. Use me. God, make me a soul winner. God, make me an instrument of honor in your hand. If that is you, come forward right now. Get up from where you are and join us here. Thank you. Thank you. From this side, come forward. This is not Dr. Castrator's church. This is the church of Jesus Christ. He was just an instrument to do it. But this is the work of the Lord. Can I hear you say amen? Thank you. Are you all right there? Thank you. Fine. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Yes, hallelujah. Thank God for your commitment. Thank God for your commitment. Hallelujah. Somebody lift your hand up. Just lift your hand up. Oh, lift your hand up. Lift your hand up. Lift your hands up. Oh, raise your hands. Say with me, Lord, here am I. Use me. Lord, here am I. Stir my spirit. Lift me up again. Give me joy in your service to follow you all the days of my life. I know, Lord, you put me here to work for you, to work for you, to labor in your vineyard. I commit myself afresh 
to you from now to serve you and do whatsoever you call upon me to do in faithfulness in tithe in offering in giving in preaching in ministering use me lord use me lord use me lord i surrender myself to you in jesus name say loud amen, amen. put your hands down listen to this if you forget everything i have said today don't forget this god is the one that brought you to this church not man not him not steve but god but god put them here to give you direction sometimes sometimes our faith is weak but god whom we are following is not weak sometimes we are discouraged but we are not discouraged because he who is in us is encouraging us i want you to rededicate yourself if every one of you here this morning will win one soul this time next month this church will be double god didn't give you this facility so you can stroll in and stroll out so you can beg god to give you miracle then you go out and face obstacles you are to use here as a center of excellence to win soul for the kingdom of god how many will say god here am i use me amen, amen. i want you now to put your right hand on your forehead say after me my dear father by your stripes i'm healed from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet i'm healed in body in soul in spirit i'm healed now in jesus name amen now put your hand there father i take authority and dominion over every foul attack of the enemy in these bodies from this minute i rebuke the devourer i curse the destroyer i command you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet be healed in jesus name thank you lord you are our healer and our restorer in jesus name everybody say amen amen i thank you for your recommitment to god in service and in the core of his life ministry i pray that today upward all your friends will be elizabeth who when you go to their home the vision in you will lift up not the person who you tell god just gave me a new car and he says what are you sure you're a christian no you need someone who will stir your vision up somebody who will spur you to action somebody you say i'm going to evening service who will say i'm going to not the one that we asked you were you not there last week you need a challenger for good and not a destroyer of evil amen 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 amen, amen.